first time. Hello, hello. I just saw Psycho. Psycho, another one off the list. One of the classic horror films that everybody suggests that you get done, that you gotta see. Finally saw it, and I thought it was okay. And when I first saw C Citizen Kane, I could appreciate that it had a huge mark on history, and it was okay for that, but I could not enjoy that one. Psycho, however, a little different, but sort of a little bit similar in that kind of a way. I, I saw Psycho from the 1960s, it seems, and I enjoyed the first half of the film more than the second half. By this point, of course, I've already known about the twist at the end with it, with him being the mother and keeping the body around, you know, ducking up from the crypt and everything, and he's got, like, psycho personality with all this. I already kind of knew all that stuff going into the film, so it wasn't like I was discovering something as it's happening. I already knew what the end point was. I'm just watching how we get there. I enjoyed the first half of the film as we're following the woman and what she's trying to do here. She's, you know, sleeping with this guy and he is, you know, it's, it, she wants it to be public and legitimate. She wants it to finally be a real relationship. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, we're, we're working on that. Sure. We're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the first scene. I imagine that in the sixties, seeing anybody, you know, after they just, you know, got done doing it and whatnot, I was probably like, wow, 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 whoa, I guess. But I, I can't put myself in the mindset of people in the sixties. So forgive me on that. But yeah, the scene is on here for a little bit, and then it goes to she's going to her job, and she works at a bank, and there's a guy depositing like $40,000 in there. He's talking all big and nice and fancy. Yeah, I'm a rich man right here. Yep, I'm pretty doing pretty well for myself. Nice. I wonder what $40,000 equates to today. Maybe like $400,000? I'm not not sure. Going from the 60s. You know, it's a long, a long time ago now, going back that far. Her co-worker's getting kind of jealous that this dude's flirting with her and she's pretty much ignoring it and whatnot. She's like, oh, you know, I guess I just wasn't you know, looking as well today as I thought. And it's like, okay, I get that. It's a little, little humor for the 60s. And then so she's supposed to take the money and uh, deposit it straight into somewhere else. I wasn't sure if she was supposed to take it to another location or what she was specifically doing with the catch. I, I assume she's put it in a vault, but maybe they have to go somewhere else to put it into a vault. I don't know. And she kept on, she keeps on saying throughout the film that, you know, she's like, oh, you know, I got a headache or I'm doing this. And every, all her coworkers basically know that she, you know, skips out a little, little bit on work. She's a little late, but she's a good worker kind of a thing. And when she's driving away, uh, her boss sees her or it was either her boss or a coworker. I wasn't exactly sure on his position at the moment. I think it was the boss, though, sees her and he's like, you're not supposed to be out here that's weird whatever okay and you know she's getting a little nervous and she's driving and she gets pulled over by a cop a little bit later and he's just this, i like seeing this exchange because i it's hard to imagine specifically going back that far what it really was like to be a citizen and having to deal with police because it's very different compared to today i would assume you know today we have all different technologies you can do and look people up it's in the system all this different stuff and so back then, you kind of like to figure out if somebody's really up to something, how much are you allowed to do with the law at the time? And yeah, she's acting a little nervous and acting kind of kind of suspicious. You know, he's like, "Are you basically like, you know, are you guilty? Are you sure? You know, what are you doing? Uh, you know, if she knew her rights more, or like, you know, entirely, maybe she could get out of this without him, you know, pushing her because sometimes cops can push further than they're supposed to, and that's not." good of course but yeah so he's like okay stay here the, the way the events happened was a little weird I, i'm trying to if i could watch it again it would make a little more sense it seemed like she gave him her information well she turns around to get her license out or get her papers out or get, get whatever out of her purse and it, it was that's already kind of weird if i'm the cop it's like just pull your just pull it out of your bag what do you why do you have to like turn away from me like nowadays if somebody were to turn away from a cop and they're reaching for something in their bag I mean, you might be inclined to shoot them because they could be pulling out a gun. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's a little sketch in the modern day. Back then, they probably, I guess, they didn't worry about that as often. But could have been a threat. This cop could have just been easy. Okay, let me get my ID and ka blah blah blah. You know, especially you know, I'm not going to let you see me reach into my bag here with it. And she's trying to like hide the money so he doesn't see. Oh, you, you just have forty thousand dollars laying around here. Wow. Uh, what job do you have? How do you have forty thousand dollars? 
Yeah, it would have led to a lot of questions, of course, for a time. And it seemed like she gave him the paper or ID. And then it just seemed like she drove off because he walked to his car and she, and he doesn't come back. She just drives off. And uh, I thought that was a little odd, but I might just be remembering the scene wrong at this point. It's been a couple of days since I actually watched the film as, as of recording this. But, but she continues on and the cop seems to be following her, but he doesn't actually follow her all the way when there's a chance to go off to a highway or go onto a different road. He seems to take it. She's like, oh, okay, she's a little relieved. That's good. And she pulls up to a car lot and seems to want to buy a new car. Like, just just wants to buy a new car right away. Just wants to buy a new car. And while she's there and she's trying to get this, she's also trying to make it a very quick exchange. The cop well, seems to pull over across the street and he's getting out of his car and he's just, like, chilling. I don't think he was smoking a cigarette or anything, but you could assume he's just like, yeah, he's just taking the view. He's just out of his car, just standing out, standing up for a little bit. And she's seeming to really want to get this car done quickly. But the salesman there is just like, yeah, you know, I'm, you're, you're the first customer of the day. First customers are usually full of problems and I'd rather not have that. And I like that little human aspect there. And uh, as she's like just trying to get whatever car she can as quickly as possible, he's like, well, that's really strange because usually I got to, you know, really put some charm on to get people to buy the vehicles here. You're just fucking jumping in all this stuff right away and you want it done so quickly. I mean, wow. All right. Should you, do you have actual paperwork? You know, and she's she's seeming very suspicious. Like, you know, he's kind of right to suspect she's being really weird, but he's not really acting on it necessarily. But she's behaving very odd. And then she then when he asks if she can pay, like, do you have any money? Really? Do you have any money for this? Seriously? Are you pulling my leg? And so she's like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom, pulls out the cash and then comes out. And it's just a little weird that you had to, you know, you go into the bathroom without the money and then you come and you come out of the bathroom. You go into the bathroom without the money, and then you come out with money in your hand as you leave the bathroom. It's a little okay, you know, and you're ready to just pay cash right up front, okay? And then you're good to go, I suppose. And she's trying to take off, and she still had her things in the other car. And they're like, you know, hey, what the fuck, lady? And, and the police, the policeman ended up pulling up into the lot while she's in the bathroom and just didn't, didn't pursue her, but it just seemed weird to them. And she was, she was behaving very odd. As if she like stole the vehicle or she just committed a murder. It seemed like yeah, she's being kind of weird. So I was, I was invested in the story, especially considering I know what the story is about. And it's about Norman Bates and about what happens with his mom and all this stuff. And about, I, so I was just like, I don't know what's happening here with this woman and what we're where we're going with this. So I was I was intrigued and I was enjoying this bit here. It was very suspenseful for the 60s, it seems. And then also, I think uh, this was pointed out to me that and at the time, they could film stuff in color, but they chose to film it in black and white as like a stylistic choice for this one. So that's an interesting thing, especially if colors, you know, if color colorized things are new. A lot of people want to see more of that, but you choose to go with a black and white early, early in that time. I think that's just interesting, especially like as things were changing for them. That's a huge change than to do release another new one, and that's also really good. But in black and white, that's. It's an interesting move. So, just, just so the food for thought there. So now we get to the hotel and the, where she meets Norman Bates, and he's into taxidermy, and they start talking. It's pouring down rain big time, so he's helping her out there, and she just is trying to find a place to stay for the night. I wasn't sure if she was entirely just making a run with the money to just completely run away and disappear, or if she was really trying to meet up with the guy that she's trying to sleep with and everything. I, I assumed that's what she was doing was meeting with him. But yeah, the way that she's behaving is that she was just making a run for it with the money. Screw it all. going to do whatever she wants. Maybe she's going to go meet up with her sister. Uh, she, they mentioned a few things in the beginning of the film that I'm not remembering exactly. And that might have been what she was, you know, it could inform what she was actually doing here. And she stops at Norman Bates's place because it's a hotel and, or a motel or whatever. And uh, you know, says there's a real difference, right? Just kidding. There is, of course. But they are chatting for a little bit. And, you know, he goes to this house in the back and seems to be arguing with his mother, even though, of course, we know that that's him arguing with himself, able to throw his voice. You know, ah, Madge, what are you doing? Chocolate. You're selling me chocolate kind of a thing. <laughs> and uh, so she's like, oh, you know, that's rude that your mother talks to you that way. It's interesting. 
having that dynamic play out like that if you don't know what's happening you think that there is another person up there and you know, he's arguing with his mom she goes and takes uh, the woman here goes and takes a shower and this is where the infamous you know nye, 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 scene and, you know the knife and stab stab stabby stab kills the girl who is it you don't know it's a silhouette to somebody but you can assume it's the mother the son comes back and he's like oh no she's dead oh no she's dead and all the blood in the bathtub everything oh no he's gonna clean it up because he doesn't want his mother to be sent to jail or be guilty whatever he'll do anything for her sure all right cool so that stuff plays out and he's you know trying to hide it he dumps the car with the cash in there and everything he did not care about the cash at all he's just trying to you know live his life here and just in solitude it seems and then later on, a detective, it's been a while since she's been like a week since she's been missing. And uh, at least since I last saw her and, you know, what the hell's going on with this? And there's a lot of people that saw her a week ago and what was going on. And a detective ends up going to Bates's place. They seem to know each other. They seem to be kind of friendly, just having a casual conversation, whatever. Uh, Bates, even though he says he doesn't get that many customers, he still changes the sheets and still keeps things clean just in case. And sometimes forgets to turn on the sign or whatever, just yeah, who cares. But then he kind of, as the detective questions, just a few more things here and there about the girl and things going on in general. He starts to contradict himself by saying, oh, we're so slow. I haven't seen, she was the first one I had in a while that came here. Oh, she did. Oh, the picture. Look, oh, that, that is her. I thought she didn't come here. But no, that was her. Right. And then it. And then he said there's another couple here that pointed something out and that's why he changed something else but then he's like well you just said you know it's so slow here and you haven't had any business in a while so you know it's some a lot of what he's saying is starting to unravel and seeing Bates you know like sweat out on this and the guy and the, de the detective is just rightfully asking you know hey can you do you mind if I take a look here do you mind if I take a look here and you know since they're kind of friends he's like okay sure sure but then he's like can I go to the house and talk to your mother that's where he gets very defensive you know you are not going to see my mother no and this was a good scene and he's like okay i guess that's all i can get out of you then right i need a warrant right now okay, okay yeah fuck off is what the gist was becoming at that point and i thought that was done really well and after that after this detective conversation with bates i felt like the movie was just really screeching to a halt just dragging on and i did not care what else was happening i just kind of wanted it to wrap up at that point after the after the detective was talking with them i, I didn't care uh, maybe it's because i already knew and i just i was like yeah I, i'm not really gaining new information with all these conversations they're having they're trying to find what happened out to her but we know this whole time and i i just wasn't wasn't as invested i don't know it just just wasn't hitting for me and i know that at the time the 60s probably was like a, a phenomenon of course especially when they first saw it and it's one of those twists that do you tell all your friends or do you let them experience it themselves i'm sure that people in the 60s loved trying to do that you know i mean the power of i know what happens in psycho do you <laughs> possibly as they're doing stuff but yeah it just it, it, you know I, I didn't really care after a while uh in the end the detective got killed as well by Bates, and he was trying to you know cover that up to the sister and the uh, boyfriend the person she's trying to sleep with and everything they were trying to look for her and you know found all this and the detective ended up arresting Bates at some point because the sister goes into the house where the mother's supposed to be and finds the corpse in the basement and then you see Bates dressed as his mother and the the guy you know is able to you know detain him essentially and they arrest him later and the investigator or psychologist I wasn't sure who he was exactly is a different different person here was explaining the whole Bates story and you know what's what's happened he's like Bates did kill your sister but also didn't and because you know the mother's side of his consciousness because he after the mother died he was abused by his dad or dad left and this stuff was happening he was clinging to his mother and she was dating somebody he felt like he was cast out all this stuff sure yeah I, I just, yeah, it's all revealed nice and neat but i i just like yeah i get it i get it and then they finally had the scene at the end where he, he, oh, he gives him a blanket and he's talking to himself in his mother's voice like he's just in his own thoughts his thoughts are speaking in his mother's tone and you know it's the, you know i wouldn't even swat a fly let, let them all watch me i'm so i'm so innocent there's no way they could ever really believe that i did something wrong 
And it, I've only seen that reference like of, in a bunch of other things, especially South Park, where they have Luke Kim. He's like, you know, oh, they are watching me. You know, ah, oh, look at that fry. Hmm, they'll see and they'll say, hmm, he wouldn't even harm a fry. <laughs> Freaking love that. Freaking love that. But yeah, so the movie altogether is fine. It's good, but I only enjoyed the first half of the film. I, I was really interested in where she was going and what was happening with all that. Is it, it was getting me in suspense a little with you know what how are they getting to the parts that i'm familiar with with this story right now this is going great and i, I liked where that went and yeah all the way up to the detective after the detective had the conversation with fates i just felt it went down down from there the twist was still good especially for the time i doubt that they saw this as much it's not often you see a trans well they you know could they clarify he's not a transvestite but you know still like, as a villain somebody who dresses in women's clothes as the villain back then it was like oh shit nowadays things that's pretty much commonplace for just people i guess but whatever that's that's psycho psycho i've seen psycho now i get it i get the references and i'll see you guys later